What's up, everybody? This is going to be my second guide that I'm recording uh, for you guys on YouTube for my YouTube channel. Uh, I'll put out more of these in the future uh, as I figure out some sick new strats. Anyways, what is this guide going to be about? This one is actually going to be about my special... My, this, is, this is my TVT special sauce build. For all you people that have been asking, Avalo, why don't I fucking YouTube this or make a guide about it? Guess what? Here's the fucking guide, guys. Uh... So I hope you like this. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. I'm gonna gonna speed through this game a bit. Um, so let's first let's first uh, let's talk about and this is a 12 minute game, guys. So I, I'm gonna put it on times two for now. But let's talk about TVT and Legacy of the Void for a little bit. Uh, TVT very frustrating <laughs> at the moment uh, why be because mech is very difficult to play uh, mech got more difficult to play in legacy of the void than it is in heart of the swarm it's and bio became like a hundred times easier to play like 99 percent of games that i have played on the legacy of the void ladder uh so far they have all been against bio every single game every single player no one is playing mech i'm like I'm like, even the, even the, you know, fucking FDO Wario guy is playing Bio. When I played him, he played Bio. Like, even, even, even us mech Terrans, some mech Terrans are losing some faith. Some, there's some mech Terran players out there that are losing faith in mech. And they're, you know, they're resorting to, to the Bio style. But you know what? Not me. I'm sticking to my ways. I'm sticking to my, sticking to my truths. And, uh, sharing it with you guys. <laughs> Sometimes... Sometimes uh, you gotta walk the uh, the more difficult path, and you find you find great things by doing that. You find this build, my my special sauce build. So guys, this build uh, it's not exactly a new build, but what is the main idea behind this build for TVT? What is everybody doing right now on TVT? They're all going bio. They're all doing. They're all yeah. Eh, I play fucking bio. I'm gonna one a in your army, bro. So <laughs> there's a lot of people using you know siege tank rushes with m the medevacs as well. Uh, people still go cloak banshee, etc., etc. So what is this build? What is what is Avalos special sauce TVT build? Go, go, go. It's a two port build. SCV two port. Ready. That's right. But it's a special two port build. <laughs> And, I, and when I say special two-port build, I don't mean fucking autistic. I mean it is like a special snowflake build. Like, this build is amazing. So what does the build entail? Uh, what, what, are we, what are we seeing here so far? <sighs> well, double gas early on. Two port, uh, you know, standard 1-1-1 one, one, one opener, but you go two ports instead of one. You get cloak banshees. Now, what is the beauty of this? What is the beauty of this strat? And you also want to make Hellions from your factory. What is the beauty of this? He's, he has scanned this. He knows what I'm doing. Or he should have some idea what, I've, what I'm doing. He scanned. So he even knows. He, so this is, this is the greatest demonstration I can give you guys of this build being, you know, a legit TBT opener and very strong. He scanned. So you're building one Viking at a time from your star, your second starport. You're building a Cloak Banshee into a Raven from your first starport. Why is this so strong? Why is this, why is this so good? Why, sh why should you guys, um, why should you attempt this build? It, it's, it's something that people don't expect. That's the thing. Like, because normally you only have a Cloak Banshee coming out, right? And so people are like, okay, I just hold off that Cloak Banshee and there's nothing else coming. But with this, you're actually getting, like, air control early on in the game. And you're continuously producing Banshees out of these out of that first Starport. You're actually, you're still producing Banshees out of the Starport. You're, you're not just stopping at one Banshee. So the opening part of, oh, you like that juke? By the way, you, uh, I cloaked my Banshee there and he lost the lock on. Pretty sick, huh? I know. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, uh, so the main the main idea here is two ports. One's making a banshee, one's making a viking, and you, and you get a reactor factory for Hellion production. You get a very late command center. You'll notice I'm actually long distance mining because I'm oversaturated on my main. And you may be thinking like Avlo, you get your second command center so late with this build, but 
the aggression, the like the aggressiveness and the threat, the potential threat that you get from having air control is what allows you to take a late expansion like I'm doing here and still be able to get away with it. You can even go to a triple command center if you want. Um, but the beauty is you have that, you, you have like a little bit of air control at this point in the game and you have the uh, the banshee, multiple banshees to be able to harass with. So once again, I'm still building, ba I'm building one banshee, one viking at a time, and two hellions. So, any attack, any attack that actually hits me early in the game can be held off with the hellions and with the banshees. And you'll notice my opponent in the production tab, he's building, he's gonna do what is, what I would say is a, more, a very standard like push with siege tanks. Uh, Marines like a medevac and maybe his raven and what you're gonna see in a moment here is you're gonna see how effective uh, this unit comp is and, and it, this is something that people never think about in TVT as an opener now I'm adding on the factory I'm adding on because you do want to go into a standard mech production after this you don't want to only stay on you don't want to only stay on air units um, because if he gets enough Marines you'll die <laughs> So triple CC going down. Now look at so if we if we look at the game here, look at what he has. This is actually like a standard push, and it looks pretty fearsome. But I have air control. I have I have three banshees at this point. I've been accumulating them the whole time. And if we check this out, if we just watch this fight, his raven goes down basically immediately. I have auto turrets going down as well. His tank is worthless. I've eliminated the tank. The Hellions, the Vikings can land. And, and his attack is crushed in its tracks. And it's not just this game that this has happened. Like, I've, you know, I played another game Base where a guy had, like, three siege tanks in his push. And I still killed his push because of the cloaked banshees. Because no one ex... See, uh, the, the beauty of uh, Legacy of the Void is, I think banshees, from all the games i played in every matchup, banshees are actually becoming a more core part um of your army due to the fact that mech is mech is so difficult to play i think banshees have actually uh like but banshees have a much more important role in in a lot of builds <clears throat> now at this point i've actually stopped producing banshees um in the production tab i'm just starting to make you know hellions and vikings and tank in a moment here tanks as well and so i actually backed off I didn't want to overcommit. I did, you know, I did damage, uh, killed a tank or whatever with my banshees. I backed off because there is right now is where you're vulnerable, where you're switching your production over to these uh, to these factories. You don't have that much. Um, you don't have that much production. You just have the initial starports. And I scanned, saw he's going bio, and uh, yeah. So I'm mostly getting blue flame hellions. I I actually have two. One of the little twists on uh, this is I have two reactor factories instead of uh, instead of two tech lab factories. So this lets you spend a lot of mineral income, you know, making more hellions, and then I'm making liberators from my starports. I'm actually getting a couple liberators as well. So my army, this 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 army uh, is difficult to deal with because I have air control, I have cloak banshees that he has to deal with, I have the raven with for the PDD, and I have a ton of blue flame hellions. So I'm just gonna slow this down to nor to the normal game speed. Research complete. So here's another push. He has tanks. Look at this. I have so many blue flame hellions. The banshees help kill the uh, the tanks quickly as well. His attack is completely crushed. Completely crushed um, via this build. And I'm so f at this point, I'm so far ahead. I'm you know, I actually have a fourth CC that I built, and I'm just you know, it's. It's crazy how strong this is. I push across the map with my blue flame hellions and uh, all my other units that I have. The liberators come in handy here. I actually, once again, once again, you'll notice in all the games I play, the liberators. I'm spacing them out so they cover the most area. You don't, you don't want liberators to overlap their, uh, you know, their liberation zones too much. They can overlap a little bit to cover each other. But you don't want them to overlap that much. You want to cover the most area for your, so that you get the most value out of them, the most space control. 
That Liberator I actually just sieged right in range of his tank. And and it's interesting how I'm, I'm you know, the Liberator, you, you can leapfrog them forward just like you do siege tanks. So it adds another layer of, <laughs> it adds another mer uh, layer of mech play where, you know, you're leapfrogging tanks, you're leapfrogging, lib like I'm leapfrogging Liberators right now. This is actually happening. <laughs> <laughs> this is Legacy of the Void. You, you're you leapfrogging air units to your opponent's base sometimes. And, uh, you know, that's not necessarily a bad thing. The interesting thing, I'm gonna pause. The interest. if you notice all my units, all my units can transform or have some ability. Tanks can siege, Liberators siege, Vikings transform, Hellions transform, Banshees cloak. Uh, managing this can get a little bit difficult, which is, you know, why I was also mentioning. Mech is way more difficult to play in Legacy of the Void. Meanwhile, the Bio Terran, you know, he's pressing, he's pressing stem pack and then a moving, like a champ, Kappa. So yeah, um, that's the opener, guys. Uh, this is the TVT opener. It is pretty sick. It is. Uh, I like it a lot. I've been, I've almost been using this exclusively on ladder and TVT. I hope people. Don't watch this and metagame me because uh, then that'll be frustrating. But it's deceptively strong. Um, it, it is a deceptively strong build. It's a very unorthodox build because you normally don't open up a TVT with double starport, but it works out um, because you have you know the added benefit of having liberators. You put a lot of production towards blue flame hellions. Naturally, your opponent is going to be building uh, a lot of marines when he plays bio to counter your banshees which is why the blue flame hell it, it's um there was a player by the name of iacoic that posted a guide on team liquid ages ago it's sort of similar to that in a way not exactly the same but you know it's sort of it's sort of similar to that for people that un have uh have seen that before uh but it more of a focus on the opener being two port and then transitioning into a more standard mech game with the uh, the initial air control, so yeah, I hope you guys get on ladder. You know, get out there, use this build. It's uh, this is this is Avalos special sauce TVT build, and yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow on stream. Thank you everybody for watching. Please like and subscribe to my YouTube if uh, and leave comments as well. And uh, yeah, I'll do more of these uh, YouTube guides. Uh, people seem to eat these up like fucking crack or or something. Anyways, peace out guys. See you guys. <laughs> see you later. Peace.